no swats bang in a few videos my name is matt welcome back to the shop and today we're talking about oh knife edging crankshafts oh yes yes now there's a video and i'm not taking the piss out of the block he's a young guy starting out on youtube and all the rest of it and he doesn't know you know what i mean but there's this video what is going on guys welcome to today's video in this one i'm going to be showing you how to do the turbo crank mod it's not that hard to do, but we do have to basically disassemble the entire engine here. I have a full circle crank in my hand right here, but to start off this engine, I'm going to go for the turbo crank mod. It's the great debate which one is better. We'll probably end up trying both, but this one isn't technically balanced, and um, that's where I've kind of researched the biggest issues. If you don't have a balanced full circle crank, you could have some problems and it might not work correctly. But doing this... This is the side that we want to sharpen because it's going to be the cutting side. The back is not. I did a couple quick markings on the side that we're going to be angling. And this just gives me an idea of what I'm going for. That way I don't get uh, mixed up in my head at all. And I know exactly what we need to do. If you're going to do the grinding yourself, I highly recommend a table vise. I'm not using one here because I felt that I wanted more control on the crank to be able to rotate it. And he's got one, he's actually got the same engine, it's this little Diddy engine, I'm sure it's exactly the same engine. And basically what he's doing is knife edging his crankshaft. And because he's heard you should knife edge your crankshaft. So there's a few ways you can do this. Um, how am I going to draw this? Uh, you have a crank web, which is, um, you know, in a sense a cylinder with a shaft coming out of it. Now you can have bits of it cut away for lightness your crank pin and all the rest of it there's a few ways you can do knife edging it's all fucking pointless but um you can see if i can use this as an example you can let me see if i can do this you can knife edge the front section here so it's like a blade so if you can see that line you can't fucking see that line jesus christ this is going down like there you can see that line on there so basically what you can do is if you look at your crankshaft from the side, like this with your pin, you can basically dot a line there and basically knife edge it in a sense, if I bring it, extrude it out like that, you can knife edge it like that. The other thing you can do is let's just say you've got a cutaway crank like this, like so, you can cut a profile into it that's an angle like this. So this is all knife edged like this. So it's basically this thin sliver. It comes to a point. Every time you do this, you're obviously changing the rotational mass um, of your crankshaft. So your fly, flywheel effect will drop out uh, the more and more material you, you, you basically remove. So you can basically have a web that's like this. And just say pins there. Usually that's slanted anyway. Uh, you can knife edge it like that from a side profile. Um, the other thing you can do as well is when I said at the, f the leading edge of the crank, the first one where you have a, a, like an edge on it, you can also put an edge on the back of it. What is this meant to do? This crankshaft rotates around a centre like so. If you have this section still on your crankshaft, all of this, well all of it, will butt into the air as it's spinning around. If you remove this, it makes it aerodynamic. Bollocks. <laughs> Yes, it would. <laughs> You've got to imagine where your crank case, your where your crankshaft is operating in. You have a column of air that your crankshaft lives in, and then when you start whipping it around, yes, the crankshaft is butting into the air, but that's the whole point. It will pass its uh, momentum, some of its momentum, into the air. Right. The whole point of this knife edging thing is if it's knife edged it will slice through the air with less form drag. Form drag is when you go uh, straight into it. Skin drag is skin drag. You know, so if you have a block like this going into the wind kind of thing, then it hits this and it basically creates a force. It's, it's momentum transfer. The air, if you are hitting the air or the air is hitting you, it is the same thing um, in the terms of forces. And skin drag is the drag between, you know, this kind of form. So if you knife edge this like so, just for instance, um, you're translating more of that form drag into skin drag. So there's going to be a bit of skin and a bit of form drag. 
and if you make this super duper 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 pointy like a fucking f14 wing or something shit like that then there's a hell of a lot of skin drag and fuck all form drag very very little form drag this is why them them streamliner motorbikes they're fucking well long or why the ssc uh, world land speed record car is like a fucking bully blah 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 right so um why is this all nonsense why is knife edging absolute fucking trap your crankshaft will go bang into this air and it'll shift the air out of the way but it'll also transfer the air is a hell of a lot lighter it's molecules compared to that crankshaft so you know it's like if i get something fucking i don't know a bit of cardboard and go like that you know what i mean it's not even bending it's bending i can feel it flexing ever so slightly and when i do that the cardboard is bashing into the air and it's plowing through it and pushing out the way which puts a force on this car which makes it i can feel it bending ever so slightly it's a shame i can't show you but you get the point everyone's fucking done stuff like that um hence why with tennis rackets you basically put uh, you know it's just a load of mesh so you can swipe through it and not it'd be like a shovel you know what i mean it's like shoveling snow or it's like a boat plowing through water now we'll use the boat plowing through water as an example all this is rotational this isn't um linear so in a sense your crankshaft will look like this and we are spinning in this direction like so so basically the only place it's butting into air is this we go from the center is this wedge of air and then it's going to hit this wedge of air and it's going to go this wedge of air and as this turns it's constantly batting this wedge of air but just like the rotor wash of a helicopter that has to shift it out of the way if a helicopter there's this um oh what do they call it it's rapid descent basically helicopters instead of having an aircraft go through the air and having the wind, the air batting into the air, helicopters bat the wings, the rotors, into the air. That's why they can stay static. But because of angle attacks and all the rest of it, they are basically drawing air in through the top and pushing air down. That gives them a bit of thrust, but it's actually more of the thrust on the rotors pulling the aircraft up. But anyway, um, as you spin this, the air has to recirculate. Now, if a helicopter drops into so let's just do our little chopper here like this if a helicopter let's get a better color if a helicopter is pushing a column of air it's more like a recirculation there's a bit of whippage there a bit of eddies and stuff but if a helicopter descends into its own wash basically then it will lose lift it drops off like you wouldn't believe it's kind of like ground force effect no it's not ground force effect it's there's a name for it the on the osprey the v22 osprey they have a rapid descent alarm if they descend too fast vertically you'll basically you're trying to push air that's going the same speed you are so you can't accelerate that air so you lose like 50 percent lift and it falls out the out of the sky and that's why i'm to a v22 osprey had a lot of marines in it or something like that the uh, aircraft pilot he was an air you know an, air, um, an airplane pilot he basically descended into his own wash too quickly and it just lost all not all its lift he just lost enough lift to not suspend the aircraft anymore it fell plummeted and they all died sadly but what's happening with this is that you're getting this air and you're giving it a shove you're booting it this way and then you're booting all the rest of the air and as you accelerate as soon as you reach as soon as you stop accelerating in a sense you can imagine it it's just like a whirlpool the air's going round with you in a sense now the air will be pushed radially outwards so the air will be pushed like this it'll actually fling out other air will mix in there so other air out here will mix in because this is a low pressure region now because you just battered it out of the way and it's just a fucking mess crank cases unless they're two stroke and even if they are two stroke they have a big gaping hole and air fuel mixture is entering the crankcase and then going up through the transports uh, transfer ports transports um you know it, it's a medley it, the air's fucking going everywhere it's going in here it's going in here it's going with the crankshaft it's going against it it's going towards it it's just it's a medley of going absolutely everywhere so the point is is if you just knife edge the leading edges 
it's doing nothing. The air's just chaotically fucking everywhere. And we're talking large regions of air. Air bounces around chaotically anyway, but that's individual molecules. And you will have a net flow of, as air moves around. In a house you have convection, so there's this slow uh, migration of air from the floor to the ceiling and back, uh, back around and all the rest of it. Same with the earth and blah, 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 blah. This is just fucking mental. It just goes fucking everywhere. And there's oil in there. A lot of people say, well, when you hit that oil mist. But that oil mist is going up. The crank jets are sc the crank bearings are squirting that oil out. There's fucking oil coming down from your piston. It's not worth it, and this is why manufacturers don't do it. Manufacturers don't do it because it's just fucking chaotic in there. You cannot de design you cannot design an aerodynamic um, form profile of a crankshaft to make it aerodynamic. Fucking air's pulsing backwards and forwards. One piston's going up, one piston's going down. The air's rushing through that way, rushing through that way. It's just a complete fucking mess. Then you'd want your crankshaft to be aerodynamic because you want to go air to rush from one cylinder, like number four and number one. You know what I mean? It's, it's bollocks. It's just bollocks. Again, no understanding of the system. It's just absolute nonsense. Knife edging your crankshaft. Even if, and I'll do the maths and we'll do a follow-up, I will work out if the air was static in a static column, how much of an RPM difference would you have if you accelerate a crank from 1000 RPM to 10,000 RPM? You know, the difference between if you drew all the air out versus, so it's a vacuum, versus the actual mass of the air in a, in a cylinder, forget the actual cylinders themselves, in a cylinder encompassing the crankshaft. So if we have a crankshaft, um, quickly, if we have a crankshaft like this, you know what I mean, how much would it make a difference if we had a crankshaft like this, how much of a difference would that make to a crankshaft, if we had a crankshaft like that, you know what I mean? If we had a crankshaft like that, if you spin this in a column of air or in a vacuum, what would be the difference in an acceleration curve going from 1000 RPM to 10,000? What would be the actual difference? What would be the acceleration rate? And if you can, you can map that and then you can basically place that against actual bike speed if all else was absolutely perfect. And you could say, fucking hell, by the time you get to a 10 second stint or a 5 second stint or whatever, however, however slow you want to do that acceleration, after 10 seconds, how much faster are you going? And I'm guessing it'd be 0.02 of a mile an hour. It'd be fucking nothing. And that'd be a vacuum versus air. You know what I mean? It's just... Just complete rubbish. Hope that makes sense and I'll see you in a bit.